So hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you are here today. My name is Trish, if you are new here. I love to focus on botanically driven skincare and indie beauty in general. I don't necessarily shy away from conventional beauty. I still do review conventional beauty products, but like I said, my focus and passion really is botanically driven beauty and indie beauty. Today's video was inspired by a comment slash request that I got a few months ago, and somebody asked me, you know, what is an active? So when I talk about in my reviews or my videos, and I talk about actives, this person wanted to know what exactly do I mean by actives and could I do a video where I talk about actives? So I know what I mean when I talk about actives and I'm typically talking about ingredients like retinoids, vitamin C, AHAs, but I decided to just go to the web and do a search for you know what dermatologists mean when they talk about actives. And in general, this is what dermatologists had to say. Ingredients that provide long-term skin benefits, ingredients that make a change in your skin, things along those lines. So obviously actives, when you're talking about actives, it's a little bit subjective in terms of what you're talking about. So Actives can be anywhere from niacinamide, ceramides, hyaluronic acid. It could even be moisturizing ingredients like shea butter, basically anything that are going to create a change in your skin, give your skin long-term benefits. So really most of the products that I'm using are going to be containing actives when you're using that definition. So most of the products that I use do contain beautifully nourishing skin ingredients, you know, beautiful oils, butters, most of the products I use do contain ceramides or niacinamide, you know, one of those types of ingredients. So when I'm talking about actives, I typically, like I said before, I'm typically talking about retinoids, vitamin C, or AHAs typically. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about, and I'm actually in this video and then a subsequent video, I'm going to be talking about the current products that I'm using that contain those actives. So today I'm going to focus on vitamin C and I'm gonna be talking about AHAs. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about the products that I have in rotation that contain those two actives. And then in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about the products that I currently have in my rotation that contain retinoids, as well as the quote unquote botanical retinols. And we'll get into more detail about what I mean by botanical retinols, but typically that does entail bakuchiol and moth bean. And like I said, we'll dive into that in the next video. But before we do dive into the products here today, I just wanted to mention that I do have the Manasi eye and brow quad on my eyelids today. That's all I have on my eyelids today. In my previous video, I did a full face of Manasi and I did mention that the next time I had this eye look on my face in a video, I would mention it to you all. So that is what I do have on my lids today. And then I also said that the next time I had Etruscan on my cheeks, that I would mention that to you as well. So I have Etruscan on my cheeks and I also have Etruscan on my lips. So I did not get a chance, and here's Etruscan a little bit closer for you all. I did not get a chance to put Etruscan on my cheeks in that previous video, so I just wanted to point that out to you all today. And then I did put a little bit of the Tower 28 Pistachio Gloss on top of the Etruscan on my lips. So I just wanted to point that out to you all today at the top of the video. Um, for those of you who watched my previous video and are interested in what the eye and brow quad from Manasi looks like on me as well as the Etruscan. So now let's go ahead and start talking about the vitamin C products. But before I do that, let's just do a quick rundown on why vitamin C is such a wonderful ingredient to have in your products. It is a antioxidant, which is going to help protect from free radical damage. And before I say the next great thing about vitamin C, let's be clear that it is not an SPF, but it does help augment your SPF. So it's gonna help boost the efficacy of your SPF but of course you still want to wear your SPF on a daily basis. And it also helps decrease hyperpigmentation and it also helps increase collagen. So all of this is backed by clinical studies. It has been studied for years and years and years. So vitamin C is a fabulous ingredient to integrate into your skincare. 
Now, a lot of the previous iterations of vitamin C in skincare products was L-ascorbic acid. Now this is the active form of vitamin C, so this is what's readily you know, bioavailable for your skin. But the problem with L-ascorbic acid is it's not very stable in skincare and it's also very irritating. So now there are vitamin C esters or derivatives of vitamin C, which are the inactive form, which need to be converted into L-ascorbic acid by your skin. Uh, but the benefits of it are that it's more stable and it's less irritating. So all the products that I'm going to talk about here do not have L-ascorbic acid. They all have the esters or the derivatives of L-ascorbic acid. And the first one I'm going to talk about here is the Sahara Rose um, Hydra C Serum. And if you've been frequenting my channel at all over the past several years, you know that this has become my absolute favorite vitamin C product. I love using this serum. It has the texture that I really love in serums, hopefully you can see that kind of watery texture that I love. It absorbs into the skin very, very easily. And I just love the texture, like I said, because it absorbs very quickly. It's liquidy, it's not tacky. And like I said, it just absorbs readily into the skin. I've never had any issues with it pilling under any moisturizers, SPF, foundation, anything like that. It just plays well with everything I've ever put on top of it. So the vitamin C ester in this product is glycerol ascorbate. It has ceramides in it, peptides, moth bean, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more in my next video about moth bean, which is considered to be one of those botanical retinols. Um, it also has licorice in it. So overall, it's just got a really lovely ingredient deck. I can't say enough wonderful things about it. I also have a 15% off code with Sahara Rose that all, you know, all my codes are down below. So if you are curious about it, and you wanna try it, I do have a code with Sahara Rose. So anyway, this is on frequent rotation. It's been a huge favorite of mine for many years, so I really, really recommend that one a lot. And then another product that's kind of similar to the Sahara Rose is the In Beauty Project Green Machine. Now I haven't talked about this yet because I've really been formulating my opinions on this. I think I got this maybe back in 2021 before I did my original no buy. I think I got this in a Sephora sale and I actually really do like this. This also has a very similar texture to the Sahara Rose except for it's a little bit thicker and it's in that dropper delivery system and you'll see hopefully that it's got that liquidy type of texture similar to the Sahara Rose. And like the Sahara Rose, it absorbs into the skin very quickly. It's got aloe and glycerin, and it's also got 15 superfoods. I'm not gonna list them all, but it's got green tea, holy basil, uh, vegan collagen. It's also got sea fennel stem cells, azelaic acid, which I think is a very interesting ingredient. I would definitely consider that to be an active. I've talked about azelaic acid in the past, which is a really great active for decreasing hyperpigmentation. It's also really nice for people who have rosacea, who have very sensitive skin. It's going to help decrease inflammation, decrease redness. I'm not gonna be talking about azelaic acid in this little series that I'm doing right here, these two videos, because I'm just not using azelaic acid that much right now, if at all. Uh, I just, I've basically run out of it and I just haven't repurchased it. So I'm not, I don't have it in my current rotation. So it's just not pertinent to these two videos because I just don't have it in rotation, like I said, but apparently it is in this product, which I was unaware of until I was preparing for this video and I saw it in the ingredient list. So of course it's relevant to talk about in this particular product. So getting to the vitamin C in here, this does have THD, which is tetrahexyl ascorbate. It's got 10% in here. And in researching for this video, THD is a favorite amongst dermatologists. And I believe that is because it is only one step away in terms of the conversion into L-ascorbic acid. So it's gonna be more readily bioavailable for your skin. 
Uh, that's my understanding of it. And in general, I am very impressed with this product. Similarly to the Sahara Rose product, it plays well with other products. I don't feel like I've had any issue with pilling. Now I have not been using it for as long as I have the Sahara Rose and I don't use it as consistently as I use the Sahara Rose. So there may be a chance that this does pill or doesn't play as well with as many products. I just haven't thrown as many products uh, at this one as I have with the Sahara Rose. So I can't speak as confidently to this one as I can to the Sahara Rose. But overall, I've been pleased with this one. It has a very good price point. I think it's around $34. So it's a really nice product with great ingredients. So if you're interested in a serum that has THD in it, that has a good price and you're wanting to just try it and see how your skin does with that particular vitamin C, then I think this is a good one to try out. Next up, I'm gonna move into a couple of oils that I have that contain vitamin C. First up is the Live Botanical First Light Brightening Oil Serum. And this has just been a long time favorite of mine. I'm just gonna show you right now the gorgeous, gorgeous color of this oil. And I have talked about this one quite a bit, but let's just review why I love this one so much. This one contains the tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, so the THD, and it has a 10% concentration, a whole plant-based vitamin E, so it's not a synthetic vitamin E, and it also contains ferulic acid. It also contains ceramides as well as pomegranate sterols. And it also contains date extract, which a lot of clinical studies have come out to show that it improves skin elasticity as well as increasing brightness. And it also is going to help improve hydration of your skin as well as decrease hyperpigmentation. It also contains a beautiful botanical ingredients like organic, fresh, and locally grown calendula flower. It has super critical extract of organic sea berry fruit, which is rich in carotenoids, which is a vitamin A pre Precursor. It also has cranberry and raspberry seed oil. There's rice bran oil in here, squalane. And then lastly, I'm gonna talk about the daikon radish in here, which helps improve the absorption of this oil, which I can definitely attest to. This is another one that really plays well under SPF as well as foundation. So I have found that this one too is a lovely one to use underneath that Manasi foundation. So overall, this is a beautiful oil to try out if you are interested in a vitamin C oil serum. I absolutely love this one. I've been using it for years and I just cannot recommend this one highly enough. And then last but not least, I have a product from a brand that is new to me. This is Fortuna Skin. And this is a product that I have been absolutely loving. And I am going to be doing a brand overview of Fortuna Skin because there is a lot to talk about regarding this brand because they have an incredible backstory that I really wanna dive into more than I have time to do here today. But I really wanted to include this product because it does have vitamin C in it. But I just wanted to let you know that Fortuna Skin, and I'm gonna grab my notes here, that Fortuna Skin is based in Sicily and it was founded by a couple, um, Steve Lusco and his wife, Agatha as well as Kim Walls, who is a skincare formulator, and she has a long background in formulating in the clean, you know, organic beauty uh, realm. So Steve is the one who has the heritage in Sicily. And when he was young, like around the age of eight, he had promised his grandmother that he would go back to Sicily and reconnect with his family and the land. And he did end up doing so. So 35 years later, he did purchase a small piece of land that I guess had the original stone foundation of his grandmother's home, which is still standing today. And that has turned into the La Fortuna Estate, which is a 864 acre organic estate. And so this estate has really enlivened the Sicilian economy. They have hired local farmers. They are dedicated to regenerative farming. They have found species of olive trees and plants that don't exist anywhere else. 
So like I said, I'm gonna go more into depth about this brand and what they are doing in a future video that's just dedicated to La Fortuna, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea about this brand because they are very high priced. They are in that very luxury organic price point. But so when you go to check out this brand, if you do so after hearing me talk about it, you will, you maybe will have a little bit of a sticker shock, but I just wanted to give you a background as to what they are doing and why their price point is quite high. So this product, the Dewey Alberry Biphase Moisturizing Oil does contain this flower called Ancusa Azuria. And that is a flower that they discovered on their land that is exclusive to their Sicilian estate. And it is a powerful antioxidant and protectant that shields against environmental stress. And it has the highest antioxidant activity of any wild edible Mediterranean plant. This also contains organic olive oil, which is harvested from the trees on their estate, which are exclusive single origin, extra virgin olive oil, which have won awards around the world and have earned organic certification from the USDA, as well as bio AgriCert, which is in Italy. Um, so of course it's going to be packed with phenolic antioxidants and vitamin E and omega-3 fatty acids. And then it also contains their organic olive leaf water, which contain protective antioxidants, uh, two, which I cannot pronounce. So I'm going to put them down below. And what's really interesting in order to make their olive leaf water, they don't use any heat and they don't use any solvents. They use what they call their sound bath extraction method, which is basically like ultrasound waves to extract this olive leaf infusion and then they use that infusion uh, for this water phase of this biphase product instead of just regular water so you're getting all those really great antioxidants instead of just water like i said in this biphase product So I'm gonna show you what the biphase looks like so that you can see the oil on the top, the olive oil on the top, and then the olive leaf water on the bottom. And then of course you have to shake it up very, very vigorously because there are no fillers or emulsifiers in here. So you've got to shake it up. And then I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see that texture. It is very runny and liquidy, but then when you put it on the skin, even though it is very liquidy, when you rub it on the skin, you can see that you get that kind of oil sheen on the skin, making it a really nice moisturizer because it has that hydration combined with that oil. So you're supposed to use it after you wash your skin and then you use your toners and your essences. It's perfect to put this on top of that. And then you wear it underneath if you wanna put another cream on top or your SPF. And then like we were talking about in the Manasi video, you want to use something like this underneath your foundation, the Manasi foundation. So this is perfect for that. So if you have a foundation that you like to have a very moisturized kind of dewy skin underneath it, this is perfect for that. So like I said, I'll be going more in depth into Fortuna skin in a future video. I just wanted to kind of do a real quick overview of the brand just to let you know how much I've been loving it, how important their backstory is, and also just to let you know how much I've been loving the Dewey Alberry Biphase Oil. And also I do have a 15% off code with Fortuna Skin, I'll leave that down below, but I think it's just Trish 15, so you can definitely take advantage of that. But yeah, I've really been loving this brand so much, and I don't know if I pointed this out, but I love this little wax seal that's embedded into the glass here. I've never seen anything like that, and I just think it is so, so lovely. So anyway, I've been loving Fortuna Skin. They just came out with a really beautiful cleansing balm. It's a cleansing oil balm that I'll also be talking about more, uh, in the near future, but I just also wanted to point that out too because that is absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and move on to lactic acid. 
Um, before I do talk about that, I just wanted to mention this idea of skin cycling. It was coined by the dermatologist, Dr. Whitney Bowe. I just wanna give her credit because she's, like I said, she's been credited for coining this term, skin cycling, but it's basically nothing new. It's, you know, this idea of giving your skin a rest um, from actives. But basically it's just this idea that's been around for a long time of giving your uh, skin, you know, rest days between using actives. I know that Jordan Samuel has been talking about giving your skin rest days for forever. I don't necessarily give my skin rest days with vitamin C. For me, my skin tolerates vitamin C. I'm not using intense, like I said, 20% L-ascorbic acid on the daily. So these, my skin tolerates very, very well. I'm fine with using all of these that I have mentioned on a daily basis in the morning. So for the evening, when it comes to lactic acid, glycolic acid, those AHAs, and then using retinoids, those I am doing a little bit of the skin cycling. And what Dr. Whitney Bowe talks about is using uh, an AHA, um, let's say like on a Monday, and then on the next night you would use your retinoid, and then for two nights you would take a break, and then you would start that skin cycling again. And so that's what I actually have been doing in the winter months because my skin just is a little bit more parched, a little bit more prone to irritation, you know, just with the central heat and the colder uh, weather, just a little bit more irritating. So that's what I have been doing. So let's start talking about the AHAs, which are, you know, the alpha hydroxy acids, which are basically chemical exfoliants. So they're going to exfoliate the top layers of your skin which are going to give you a little bit more radiance, um, smoother texture, and they're going to help decrease hyperpigmentation. So these are usually derived from plant sources. So I'm gonna be talking about glycolic acid and lactic acid. Glycolic acid is derived from sugar cane and lactic acid is derived from milk. And glycolic acid has a very small molecule. I believe of all the AHAs, it has the smallest. And so it's able to penetrate the skin very well. But because of that, it's more prone to irritate your skin. Lactic acid has a larger molecule, so it's going to be less irritating. And I believe malic acid, which is derived from apples, has the largest molecule. So if you're very, very sensitive to AHAs or you just have very sensitive skin in general, you might want to look for a product that has malic acid. Now I find lactic acid to be very tolerable for me. My skin loves it. Um, lactic acid is very humectant. Well, actually all the AHAs are humectant, but lactic acid is one of the more humectant, one of the more hydrating of the AHAs. And then they all do help boost collagen production, but apparently glycolic acid is the one that's best for boosting uh, collagen production. Uh, with all the AHAs, you're going to want to be very diligent about using your SPF because they're going to cause a little bit of photosensitivity or a lot of photosensitivity, I guess, depending upon your skin type. Um, so you're definitely going to want to use your SPF. And then also, just like I mentioned, you're gonna wanna use with some caution because with overuse, it can cause some irritation. So let's go ahead and dive into the products that I do have. I mentioned in a previous video that I do have this Rose Ingleton Super Fruit uh, Exfoliating Tonic. This has 8% glycolic, so there's no lactic acid in here, it's just glycolic. This I have yet to use on my face. I've just been using it on my body. So as a body exfoliator, mostly on the backs of my thighs after I shave. But I thought I would just go ahead and mention it anyway because I do have it in my rotation. But I do use this as a body exfoliant. I think as the summer rolls around, and as my skin feels a little bit less dry and prone for irritation, I might go ahead and try this on my face and I will keep you posted on that. Another toner that I have is the Josh Rosebrook Daily Acid Toner. This has glycolic acid in it and I thought it would just be nice to mention that it also has hibiscus flower acid in it. I don't know the percentage of glycolic acid. Um, if I'm remembering correctly on the Rose MD, 
Glycolic acid, I think, was the second ingredient, whereas on the daily acid toner, it's about midway down, so I don't think it's quite as strong as 8%, so I can't even hazard a guess, so I'm not going to, but I'm, I don't think it's quite as strong as 8%. This one, to me, seems very gentle. I have not had any issues at all with using this one, and I really do like it a lot. Another toner that has an AHA in it is the Nini Organics Rain. I've mentioned this many times. I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorites of all the favorites when it comes to a mist slash toner essence, and this has a lactic acid in it. This is very, very gentle. I just can't imagine this causing any issues in terms of its AHA content. So this I think is a really good one. If you're interested in lactic acid, you're kind of concerned about irritation, I think this would be a really lovely one to opt for. And then along those same lines is the Youth to the People Adaptogen Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist. This has been a staple of mine for so many years now. You can tell I'm almost done with it. This is maybe my third or fourth bottle. Absolutely love this one. It has a really lovely fine mist, as you can see, a very subtle, gentle, floral type of scent. I just really love this one. I, it's going to continue to be a staple of mine. And this has lactic acid in it. Very, very low down on the ingredient list, so I'm not even too sure how much of a chemical exfoliant uh, you know, action it's actually having because it's so far down on the ingredient list. But, you know, in terms of all the products that I have, I, I tried to do my best in terms of scanning all my products and trying to parse out, you know, what, for today's video, what had vitamin C in it and, or what has vitamin C in it and what has an AHA in it. And so I figured it made sense to include this because this does have lactic acid in the ingredient deck. But like I said, it's very, very low down. So now let's go ahead and move on to serums. First up, I'm gonna talk about the Eco Botanicals Nefertiti Radiance Botanicals Serum. I just wanna let you know the ingredient deck on this one because it's so beautiful. This has lactic acid, so that's the AHA in here. It's also got green tea, red, blue, and green algae, which are all sustainably sourced aloe vera, niacinamide, licorice, hibiscus, and borage oil. So really a beautiful ingredient deck. Now this has one of those little like pump dispensers, which is not my favorite. I wish it had like a traditional pump dispenser, but as you can see, it's got kind of a thicker texture, which you might be able to see a little bit better on my hand. I'm gonna show you that. So a little bit of a thicker texture, which I don't know if you're gonna actually be able to see. So it is thicker, but it does absorb very nicely and it does feel a little bit more moisturizing than those other two serums that I talked about, the other two vitamin C serums, the Sahara Rose and the In Beauty. It just has a little bit more of a moisturizing feeling, maybe coming from that borage oil. And the scent is really interesting. It's got rose geranium and frankincense in it and kind of like their Amina cleansing oil, which also has rose geranium in it which is a scent I don't typically love. I don't know if Apinke, the formulator and founder of this brand, has a particular type of rose geranium that's different from the rose geranium I'm used to. I don't know, it's very special and very intriguing to me, but like I said, I typically don't like rose geranium, but there's something about her line that has a very intriguing sort of different rose geranium that I actually am really enjoying. But yeah, the frankincense makes it kind of musky and earthy and yeah, her, her scents and her products are really, really special. And I've mentioned many times how much I love the Amina cleansing oil and this Nefertiti is also very beautifully scented. So highly recommend checking this out if you are interested in a really beautifully kind of like humectant, uh, moisturizing type of serum that does have lactic acid, as well as other very, very beautiful ingredients. So highly recommend this as well. Now I'm gonna move on to another serum that I absolutely adore. This is the Lil Fox Dewy Bean Dream. I've mentioned this many, many times. This has lactic acid as well as glycolic acid. So this is definitely 
more of an active active than some of these other products that I've talked about in the AHA category. This also has uh, moth bean in it. And as I mentioned before, because moth bean is in the Sahara Rose Vitamin C Serum. Moth bean has been tagged as one of those retinol alternatives, a botanical retinol, but it is a vitamin A rich legume, which is going to help stimulate collagen. This also has niacinamide in it. And this has kind of similar in a way to that Nefertiti serum that I just showed you, a little bit more of that kind of thick slippy texture that feels very moisturizing that just soaks into the skin very nicely. But as the name suggests with Dewy Bean Dream, this is something that you probably want to use at nighttime because it does have both the lactic acid and the glycolic acid in it. And to me, it feels very active. So I just use this at nighttime. And when I was talking about the skin cycling, what I'll do is I'll use this on, let's just say a Monday, and then I will use a uh, Monday night, and then I will use a retinoid on a Tuesday night, followed then by Wednesday and Thursday night night with products that do not have these types of actives in it and then just start that cycle all over again. So when I use Dewy Bean Dream, I feel like when I wake up the next morning, my skin just looks very, very radiant, very smooth, very soft. I've been using this product for years now. So in terms of a very potent AHA product, this is the favorite of mine that I do have. And then lastly, I'm gonna end with two products that are kind of similar. I have the Nini Organics Violet AHA BHA resurfacing mask and the Tata Harper super kind radiance mask. And this is for sensitive skin. Actually the violet mask from Nini Organics is also for sensitive skin. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Nini Organics violet resurfacing mask, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous purple color which is due to the butterfly pea in here, which is an extract that is very soothing to the skin. This has glycolic acid and lactic acid. It also has cockadoo plum, baobab, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide in it. And the texture of this is absolutely beautiful. It just feels really, really lovely. It has a very smooth gel-like texture that of course is going to be very hard to translate onto camera, but hopefully you can get a sense of that beautiful slip. And the best way I can describe it is it just feels like the smoothest, silkiest honey just moving onto your skin. Like if, you, if you've ever tried to apply honey onto your skin or a honey mask, you know that it like pulls and tugs and sometimes doesn't feel the best applying onto your skin. But if you can imagine like a very dreamy, silky, smooth honey, just like going onto your skin in a, just a very dreamy way, that's kind of what this feels like. And it just, like I said, it just smooths onto the skin just very, very beautifully. Now moving on to the Tata Harper, which also has lactic acid in it, but no glycolic acid. And it has, similarly to the Nini Organics, it has glyco I mean, it has uh, glycerin in it. It's diglycerin, but very similar. It has glycerin in it. Um, this is more creamy, I would say. And I'm almost done with it and I've really been enjoying it. This is probably one of my favorite products from Tata Harper. And I'm just gonna smooth a little bit onto the skin. It's kind of similar in texture, like I said, to the Nini Organics, but this is more creamy, I would say. Less kind of like that silky honey texture and more creamy. No scent and I don't think the Nini yeah, the Nini Organics doesn't have a scent either, so they're both unscented. So they're quite similar. When you look at the ingredient deck, they both have very beautiful botanical ingredients as well. So I think they're very comparable. Um, I'm not remembering the prices right off the bat, so I'll list those down below because I'm kind of doing a comparison for both of these. So I think it's important to know how much both of these cost. So the other evening I did a side-by-side -side comparison. I put the Nini Organics on one half of my face and I did the Tata Harper on the other half of my face and I left them on for the same amount of time because like I said the Tata Harper is very much so promoting itself 
you know, it's got super kind in the name. It's promoting itself for sensitive skin. And I do also know that the Nini Organics is also saying that it's good for sensitive skin. So I left both of them on for about 45 minutes, I think. And that's a reason why I've been enjoying the Tata Harper one is that I can put it on and I don't have to worry at all about how long I've left it on my skin. And I kind of wanted to put the Nini Organics to the same test as well. So they both pass that test. I can leave them on my skin and I don't have to worry about irritation. So then what I did is I think then I jumped in the shower, rinsed it off, you know, took my shower. It wasn't like a full washing my hair type of shower. It was just a quick like rinse off type of shower. Then when I got out of the shower and I started doing my skincare, I kind of forgot that I had used both of these masks. And as I was applying my toner and my skincare, I was like, oh my gosh, my skin feels really, really soft. And then I, like I said, I had kind of forgotten that I had done the masks. And then I had to remember, I was like, oh yeah, I did those, I did the Tata Harper and the Nini Organics masks. And both sides of my face really did feel very, very smooth. I think they both felt quite comparable. So because of that, because they both felt quite comparable, in my mind, I would much, much, much rather support Nini Organics. I feel like Tata Harper has been bought out by a big conglomerate. I can't remember who they were sold to. I think maybe it was, uh, I'm not even gonna say it. I'll put it down below, but I know they were bought out. They're not an indie brand anymore, whereas Nini Organics is 100% Indie. It is just owned by Alex and his sister. I'm blanking on his sister's name. I apologize for that, but it is just a brother and sister team, very, very devoted to botanical beauty, indie organic beauty. So yes, 100% I would purchase from Nini Organics in a heartbeat over Tata Harper. So no, no contest. So 100% I would purchase the Violet Mask. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It is a joy to use in terms of the application, the fact that I can leave this on my face for however long I want to, and I don't have to worry about any kind of irritation. So I absolutely love this mask. So I've actually used it several times now. I've used it a couple times where I've mixed the Violet Mask with the Nini Organics Otopia, which is absolutely dreamy. And then, like I said, I've used it by itself with the comparison with the Tata Harper and found that it left my skin absolutely just so, so soft. And yeah, I just really, really love it a lot. So highly recommend this if you are looking for an AHA, very gentle resurfacing mask. So that does it. That is an exhaustive review of all the products that I have that contain vitamin C and AHAs. And I have been having to tinker with the light, so I hope that hasn't been too distracting. Um, as I mentioned many times in my videos, I'm always battling with the natural light here in the Pacific Northwest. It is one of those days where the clouds are moving across the sun, just back and forth. Like I said, my next video will focus on retinoids as well as a couple of products that have botanical retinols in them. So I'm really looking forward to that one as well. I thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end. If you have not yet subscribed, I would love it if you would do so. And thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in that next one. Bye.